We return to the UN headquarters, listen to the statements of the chair of the delegation of Morocco. Francis, for your election to preside over the 78th session of the General Assembly at the United Nations, I wish you success in your endeavor. I would also like to commend the special efforts of His Excellency Mr. Chaba Korosi, your predecessor who presided over the previous session. Allow me to seize this opportunity to reaffirm our support to the initiatives by His Excellency Mr. Antonio Guterres, the Secretary General of the United Nations, to empower our organization so that it can address the urgent global challenges included in our common agenda. We look forward to participating and contributing in the Summit of the Future in 2024. Mr. President, allow me to express the deep thanks and appreciation of the Kingdom of Morocco to their Majesties, Highnesses and Excellences, Kings, Princes, Heads of State and Government and Ministers that expressed their solidarity and support to Morocco following the earthquake. I would like to thank them for their readiness to stand with my country to fight the repercussions of this natural disaster. The Kingdom of Morocco has faced the repercussions of this earthquake, which led to the death of 3,000 people and injured 5,700 others. It also led to grave material losses. We face those repercussions with determination, seriousness, and solidarity, and these are the values of Morocco. Since the beginning of the earthquake, His Majesty King Mohammed VI, God bless him, gave his noble instructions to mobilize all state institutions, including the Royal Armed Forces, the government institutions, local authorities, public forces, and civil prevention teams to take all the necessary urgent actions to accelerate the rescue and relief of the injured and to provide assistance to families affected. We immediately established an interministerial committee to develop an urgent program for the reconstruction and rehabilitation of affected areas. The Kingdom of Morocco was under the effective leadership and the direct supervision of His Majesty King Mohammed VI, God bless him. And we passed from rescue and relief, urgent rescue and relief, to reconstruction and rehabilitation of affected areas. His Majesty gave his noble instructions to adopt a well-studied and ambitious program to provide strong, consistent and quick response to all the repercussions of this natural disaster. We allocated about $12 billion for this program from our budget for the next five years. The first phase of the project covers all affected areas and provides services to 4.2 million people. This program was adopted following the identification and detailed assessment of needs. It includes programs for the reconstruction of homes and the rehabilitation of affected infrastructure. It also promotes socioeconomic development in the affected areas. This will be funded, this multilateral program will be funded from the state's budget from the contributions of the committee and the special solidarity account established to address the repercussions of the uh, earthquake as well as from international support and solidarity. His Majesty the King stressed the need for the re rehabilitation and reconstruction to be consistent with the architectural specificities and the traditions of the areas. It must respect the dignity of its people and their norms and traditions. In line with these measures, all the components of the Moroccan community inside the country and abroad took part in national efforts to provide assistance to those in need. This proved the strong national solidarity in our uh, society in these difficult circumstances. Mr. President, 
The earthquake in Morocco, as well as the tornado and floods in sisterly Libya, as well as climate change, continue to represent the biggest challenge to humanity in the globe. This is why today, more than ever, there's a need to promote prevention, resilience, international cooperation as part of the international community's priorities. This session is being held in a very critical global context that is facing different geopolitical tensions, climate change, poverty eradication, migration, terrorism, hate speech, pandemics, and natural disasters. However, the pace of current technological and scientific progress might be a source of hope, provided that current challenges lead to international solidarity and cooperation to promote scientific research, including artificial intelligence, and to encourage the equal sharing of their benefits in strategic priorities, such as health security, energy transformation, food and water security, modern technologies, and fighting natural disasters. The current circumstances require national policies in line with or consistent with our international commitments by focusing on the promotion of uh, resilient societies through a comprehensive approach based on equity and social justice to achieve sustainable development. This also requires us to promote a multilateral system based on solidarity and cooperation with the UN at its center. This approach was adopted by the Kingdom of Morocco in line with the noble instructions of His Majesty King Mohammed VI, God bless him, to launch structural workshops, especially the new development model, to promote sustainable development, energy transformation, social coverage and fight natural disasters as part of a comprehensive vision that is in line with the sustainable development goals. His Majesty King Mohammed VI attaches great importance to the empowerment of women and the family in general. This is why today he sent a noble message to His Excellency the Prime Minister to review the personal status code through consultations with the participation of all stakeholders to submit amendment proposals for this code within six months. Mr. President, the Kingdom of Morocco expresses deep concern regarding the spread of hate speech, especially through social media. This sows the seeds of division within societies, cultures, and states, and exacerbates violent terror uh, extremism. It is rather the main factor of global instability. This is something stressed by His Majesty King Mohammed VI, God bless him, in his noble message to the participants in the ninth session of the Global Forum for the Alliance of Civilizations held in FAS on the 22nd and 23rd of November 2022. He said, and I quote, Our civilization has never confronted such risks. Coexistent has never faced such tremendous daily challenges. Rarely did we fear and suspect others. Like, like today, and rarely was every trigger event used to instigate fear and hatred like today. End of quote. We reaffirm Morocco's re full rejection and condemnation of every assault on 
religious symbols and sacred books. We strongly denounce the desecration and burning of the Holy Quran. This insults more than 2 billion Muslims around the globe. This is a violation of the basic rules of human rights. The relevant countries should take all the necessary measures to stop such violations. In line with this position, the Kingdom of Morocco tabled in July this year a resolution on fighting hate speech adopted by consensus by member states at the United Nations General Assembly to condemn the desecration of sacred books. For the first time, it classified such acts as a violation of international law. The resolution also called upon the Secretary General of the United Nations to organize the first conference on hate speech in 2025. We recognize the important role of sports in bringing states together and spreading a culture of peace and tolerance. This is why the Kingdom of Morocco submitted a candidacy jointly with Spain and Portugal to host the 2030 World Cup Finals. His Majesty King Mohammed VI, God bless him, stressed the importance of this candidacy by saying how unprecedented it is. It brings together two continents and two civilizations, Africa and Europe. It unifies the two banks of the Mediterranean and promotes the aspirations and ambitions of the people of the region for further cooperation, understanding, and communication. Mr. President, we remain attached to a final political solution for the fabricated regional conflict in the Moroccan Sahara to promote development, stability, and peace in the region and the African continent. Morocco continues to support the efforts of His Excellency the Secretary General of the United Nations and his special envoy to relaunch roundtables with the same format and the same participants, especially Algeria, the main party to this conflict, in line with Security Council Resolution 2654. We reaffirm once again that the final solution can only be political, realistic, and practical based on consensus. The Initiative for Autonomy, as part of the Kingdom of Morocco's territorial integrity and national sovereignty, remains the only solution to this fabricated regional conflict. There is no alternative for this solution. On this basis, more than 100 countries today from all over the world support the Moroccan Autonomy Initiative. More than or around 30 states and regional organizations opened consulates in the Sahara. As part of our new development model for the southern regions, we allocated until today 10 billion US dollars and we implemented about 81% of this project to promote the socio-economic development of this region. This made it a regional hub for trade between Africa and the rest of the world. The special representative of, or the special envoy of the Secretary General, Mr. Stefan Di Mistura, saw firsthand these achievements during his visit of the two cities of Al Ayoun and Al Dakhla in the Moroccan Sahara in the beginning of this month. These great efforts are part of the noble instructions of His Majesty the King included in his speech to, commemor to commemorate the 47th anniversary of the Green March on November 6, 2022. He said, and I quote, Our defense of the Moroccanness of the Sahara is based on a comprehensive approach that includes diplomatic and political work, 
the promotion of social, economic and humanitarian development of the region. The Kingdom of Morocco expresses deep concern regarding the catastrophic humanitarian situation in the Tindof camps in Algeria. Algeria, the host country, delegated its authority illegally to a separatist armed group with confirmed close links to criminal and terrorist networks. This perversion requires the attention of the international community because Algeria refuses to register and count the people detained in the Tindouf camps. This is a blatant and clear violation of international law and the repeated calls by the Security Council since 2011. The non-registration of people detained in the Tindouf camps allowed for the looting of humanitarian assistance sent to them. This was confirmed in reports by international, regional, and non-governmental organizations, latest of which a report of, by WFP in January 23. Mr. President, we stand in full solidarity with the sisterly uh, with sisterly Libya following the unprecedented floods that led to grave losses in lives and properties. We express our full genuine condolences to the people and state of Libya as well as to the families of victims. We wish the injured SPD recovery. In line with the noble instructions of His Majesty the King, God bless him, we will always stand with the legitimate Libyan institutions and we support international efforts to solve this crisis in this country in line with the agreements reached by different Libyan parties, especially the UN efforts to reach a permanent political solution to the Libyan crisis in line with the Sukhairat Agreement of 2015. In this vein, Morocco hosted a series of meetings that led to an agreement between the Speaker of the House and the Chairman of the Libyan High State Council in October 2022 to implement the outcomes of the Bozomnika uh, meeting to unify the executive. In Buzanika, from May 23rd to June 6, 2023, a meeting was held for the Joint Committee, the 6 plus 6, which includes the House of Representatives and the Libyan High State Council, to prepare for the electoral laws. It led to major agreements on the organization of elections in Libya. Mr. President, the Palestinian question is a national priority and it is a cornerstone in our foreign policy. We call for avoiding any escalation and violence so as to prevent from the situation from getting out of control. We call for sparing the Middle East further tensions which derails the peace process. His Majesty King Mohammed VI, God bless him, as President and Chairman of the Al-Quds Committee in the OIC, expressed the importance attached by the Kingdom of Morocco to the Palestinian question by saying, I quote, with the same seriousness and determination, we stress Morocco's position to ensure a just solution to the Palestinian question and the legitimate rights of the Palestinian people to establish an independent state with East Jerusalem as a capital to protect the stability and security of all the peoples of the region, end of quote. We reject all unilateral measures that jeopardize the historic and legal status of Al-Quds Al-Sharif. We support the Palestinian Authority led by His uh, Excellency President Mahmoud Abbas and its decisions to protect the legitimate rights of the Palestinian people to achieve their uh, ambition 
to establish an independent state with East Jerusalem as a capital on the lines of 4 June 1967 in line with the internationally agreed upon two-state solution and in respect of the principle of international legitimacy and relevant resolutions. Mr. President, in conclusion, it is our responsibility as member states to provide the necessary conditions to ensure the success of our organization by providing it with the necessary resources and political will to ensure its reform so that we can build a more just and human multilateral global order based on solidarity. His Majesty King Mohammed VI, God bless him, has already stressed this in his noble speech before the 59th session of the General Assembly, where he called for the following, and I quote, promoting trust in the United Nations as our humanity's living conscience, as the cornerstone of a new global order based on comprehensive peace and security, collective development, equality, tolerance, democracy, and fraternity, end of quote. May the peace, mercy, and blessings of God be upon you. I thank the